Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the brand new Intel Core i7 3770K 22 nanometer Ivy Bridge flagship CPU. Alright, and here's the box. Once again, we're looking at a Core i7 processor which is unlocked and unleashed. The exact model we're looking at is the i7 3770K which uses the LGA 1155 socket just like any other Ivy Bridge CPU does. Here on the side some specifications are listed and it even features the new Intel HD Graphics 4000. On the back of the box there's a description in different languages. On the other side are some more specifications to see here with the 95 watt TDP cooling solution. On the top you can see the processor itself inside the plastic case. But now let's open this box up and see what's inside. Of course you get the installation instructions with the Core i7 sticker on the back. The Intel stock heatsink is also provided, which is kinda small. Thermal paste comes reapplied already. The fan uses a 4 pin connector. And at last the processor itself in a plastic case. I'll quickly unpackage it so you can look at it better. There you go, it looks very standard but very nice at the same time. At the back are the contacts which you shouldn't necessarily touch. For this review I installed the CPU in the MSI Z77A-GD65 motherboard which I already reviewed earlier before. But for cooling I didn't go with the Intel stock heatsink, instead I'll go with the Cooler Master V6 GT aftermarket CPU cooler. Now to the specifications. The Intel Core i7-3770K is a quad-core Ivy Bridge CPU with a base clock of 3.5 GHz and a turbo clock of 3.9 GHz. It also features the new Intel HD Graphics 4000 and has a TDP of 77 watts. The new 22 nanometer architecture is used and it has 1 MB of level 2 cache and 8 MB of level 3 cache. Dual channel DDR3 1600 memory is supported natively. Here in CPU-Z this processor gets detected without any problems and once again we're looking at an Ivy Bridge CPU that runs in the LGA 1155 socket. The TDP got lower compared to the 95 watts on the previous generation Sandy Bridge CPUs. The new 22 nanometer architecture is now used and the voltage has actually increased a little over Sandy Bridge, but that's because of Intel's new Tri-Gate technology. This also means that the temperature should get a little higher. Of course the latest instructions are used and as you can see the CPU runs at 1.6 GHz right now on idle. It'll go all the way up to 3.9 GHz once Turbo Boost kicks in. Also you can easily overclock the CPU since it's a K-series processor which means the multiplier is unlocked. Here's once again the cache and this CPU has 4 cores and 8 threads. That's Intel's hyper threading technology that they use on their Core i7 CPUs. This means Windows and other applications will detect that there's 8 cores, which actually are 8 virtual cores. That way you get more performance and save some energy instead of having 8 real cores on the CPU. Once again this is running on the MSI Z77A-GD65 motherboard with the latest BIOS version installed at the time of this video. For the memory I got 8GB of DDR3 2000MHz RAM installed. And that's a great benefit of Ivy Bridge right off the bat, it supports a lot more frequencies than Sandy Bridge did. For instance I couldn't achieve 2000MHz on the memory without overclocking the platform. Yes this is a 2000MHz kit, I didn't overclock it. But on Sandy Bridge I could only get it to run at 1866MHz on stock speeds. So that's definitely not a problem anymore on the new 22nm CPUs. But now let's move on to the benchmarks. This is my test system. First is 3D Mark Vantage at the performance preset of course. And as you can see I got outstanding results, 27,973, that's almost 28,000. It's still a wonder how Intel could actually improve that score of the previous generation i7-2700K which scored around 26,500. I'm really impressed and this Core i7 Premium processor gets close to the extreme level already. I guess we should now take a look at the 3D Mark 11 scores. Of course I also ran this at the performance preset and scored P4260 which is also quite impressive. I guess I don't need to tell you the CPU will be able to run games on ultra settings. Keep in mind that I ran through this test with the GTX 560 non-TI version. Next is Cinebench release 11.5 which also gave me great results of 7.97 points for the CPU. Rendering is so fast with this processor you will definitely notice the difference even in simple tasks. All I can say here is amazing. Here in ADA64 cache and memory benchmark I got some really really nice memory transfer rates but even better cache results. 
It doesn't matter if you're talking of L1, L2 or L3 cache, it's just very fast. The latency got lower as well which is very good, it's almost twice as fast compared to the i7-2700K. It also has a faster memory controller which results in faster memory transfer rates. As you can see Turbo Boost kicked in with 3.9GHz. Now it's time to calculate in Super Pi. The CPU will now calculate 1 million digits of Pi and that didn't take long at all, it only took 9.376 seconds which is very fast. And now let's move on to the final synthetic test W prime. I'll let the CPU calculate 32 million integers across all available cores. The CPU finished in 6.941 seconds which is super fast. And now let's move on to the game benchmarks like Dirt 3 at 1680 by 1050 at ultra settings. The minimum frame rates I get are 49 FPS and grade 59 FPS at max which is totally smooth. Of course Dirt 3 isn't as demanding as Battlefield 3 that I ran here at 6 and 80 by 1050 at ultra high settings but turned off the MSAA and lowered the AF to 1x. I get 44 FPS at minimum, 64 FPS on average and amazingly great 82 FPS at max. So there's definitely no lag in sight, but you wouldn't necessarily require a Core i7 CPU to play games. There honestly is not much of a difference compared to a Core i5. But please keep in mind that I ran these games with the GTX 560 non-TI graphics card. Also before I forget the CPU has brand new integrated graphics, the Intel HD Graphics 4000. Of course it will not perform like a GTX 560 or so or even get close to that, but it supports DirectX 11 and will do the basic tasks. For example I ran through the 3D Mark Vantage to give you a basic idea on how the score could look like. The GPU score is 3367 which is twice as good compared to the previous generation Sandy Bridge Intel HD 3000 graphics. While it's a big step forward it still can play games at decent settings. I'll demonstrate you that in Dirt 3 at 1680 by 1050 yes you heard right and everything else at ultra low settings. The minimum frame rate is 30 FPS and on average I get 40 FPS, which is already quite good for an iGPU considering this was tested at 1680 by 1050. In Battlefield 3 the results look a little worse, especially if the resolution has to be lowered in order to get halfway acceptable frame rates. I ran it at 800 by 600 at lowest settings as possible and get 18 FPS on minimum, 27 FPS on average and 37 FPS at max. I'd call it unplayable but after all the iGPU wasn't meant for gaming. But now let's take a look at the temperatures. On idle I get 28 degrees celsius which are 82 degrees fahrenheit. On low the temperature goes all the way up to 68 degrees celsius which are 154 degrees fahrenheit. The ambient room temperature was at 22 degrees celsius which are 72 degrees fahrenheit when I ran the tests. On idle I get very nice low temperatures but on low it gets a little hot but just a little bit hotter than the i7-2700K. So there definitely is nothing to worry about, Intel said it's perfectly normal. And anything under 100 degrees celsius which are 212 degrees fahrenheit is safe. You don't necessarily need a better aftermarket CPU cooler for the CPU. Intel includes a stock heatsink and this is what comes with the CPU. It's meant to run with that heatsink and I guess Intel knows what they are doing. You probably will think how will these temperatures affect overclocking. Well you'll get higher temperatures than you used to see in previous generation sand bridge processors. It just operates at a higher temperature and we have to accept that. And now to the final test the power consumption. On idle the CPU with the GTX 560 draw around 60 watts. On load the CPU with the GTX 560 which is an idle draw around 132 watts. On idle the CPU with the iGPU draw 46 watts. On load the CPU with the iGPU draw 118 watts. So the power consumption decreased dramatically which is very nice especially when the performance of the CPU increased. Intel did a great job once again. The Intel Core i7-3770K CPU is one of the very best CPUs at the time of this video. For the price it offers performance almost like an extreme processor does but consumes a lot less power and is actually very very efficient. The temperatures also aren't high at all compared to previous generation Sandy Bridge Core i7 CPUs. This Ivy Bridge flagship model is definitely a great choice if you have to do lots of multitasking, video editing, rendering, conversions and so on. For gaming a Core i5 processor is the right choice since you won't notice much of a difference. The i7-3770K is a CPU for enthusiasts. Pros are great price performance ratio, very low power consumption, 
massive performance, doesn't matter what you throw at it, and it supports high frequency memory and also allows much more variants of frequencies on the memory. For the cons I have nothing to say at all, I give this beast of a processor a 10 out of 10 and definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.